Hi, my name is Steve Sharman. I'm a technical solutions architect within the EMEA Digital Acceleration team. And in this short series of videos, I'm going to talk you through how to make ACI simple for your customers. When interacting with customers, we can clearly present lots of slides to them, but I prefer to actually whiteboard up the solution and, and build it up and step them through so they understand how things are constructed. You tend to get much more feedback that way, and, and it's the way that I prefer to do things. So when we start to build out a network, an ACI fabric, the first thing we need to do is consider the topology of the switches. So we have our spine switches, and we have our leaf switches. So the, the actual build out of the network is extremely simple. It's a two-tier architecture. That's the way the architecture is constructed. And we configure the network through our controller, which is known as the APIC. The APIC is the place where you go to to actually deliver the configuration into the network. You don't go to the individual switches to configure them, you just configure everything through the APIC. The methods that we use to talk to APIC are through the GUI, through the command line, or through the API. Customers start off using the GUI. That's the way that every customer starts off building the configuration for the network. It's the simplest way. You'll get up and running very, very quickly. But when we come to troubleshooting, or when we come, I guess, to more advanced uses of the network, I tend to use the command line. So I don't tend to troubleshoot through the GUI. I use the CLI. I've been at Cisco for a long time. That's just my personal preference. From a config perspective, though, I tend to use the API. So I like this method to push in configuration in bulk. So I can now deliver lots of configuration into the network in a consistent manner. If we look at how the network is built, though, so we've, we've plugged in our boxes, we've got our switches connected. The switches discover each other automatically. So we're sending out neighbor discovery uh, requests across these links. The APIC is going to pick up this, this request from the first leaf switch. You accept that onto the network. And once that leaf is accepted on, we'll automatically discover the switches across the entire fabric. We also push out an internal IP address to all of the, all of the switches on the ACI fabric. So the build is extremely simple. There really is nothing to do. You don't need to consider internal VRFs or IP address allocations or anything like that. The network literally builds itself. So it's a great benefit for when you stand up a new infrastructure. When we come to actually start using it and laying down the configuration into the network, um, as I say, we'll start off configuring in the GUI. And in a few minutes' time, we'll look at all the different building blocks, so the tenants, the EPGs, the subnets, the VRFs, etc. But the key benefit from a customer is now that I've got one place to go to pull out all of this information from the network. And what does that mean? Well, if I construct my network configuration based on an application name, for example, I can actually pull back the application configuration as the network that relates to the network actually from the network itself. So that is a, that's a key benefit. And, and one of the accounts that I work with, one of the financials, they wrote a small script that queries the APIC API so that their help desk can use it. And whenever a fault is raised to their help desk, they can actually pull back the networking config for that specific application. That, that was great for the help desk, but for this customer, an even bigger benefit was for auditing. Because they're a financial, they're audited continually. And so now they could actually go to APIC and pull out the running config for all of their different applications across the network. Once we've built out our infrastructure, what we're going to attach is our servers and our external routers and switches always to the leaf switch. So in the most basic topology, nothing attached to the spine. There's, there's always an exception. So when we look at multi-pod networks, for example, um, we attached uh, external routers to the spine. But for your basic building blocks and to get the customer really understanding how we build things, I always stick with this very simple topology. One thing to note, though, when we build this is that I don't really talk, as you've seen, about the switch part numbers. We look at how the network is constructed and the benefits of building a network in this way. And I always say to customers, get your spreadsheet out. Let's have a look at how many ports we need. So how many ports do I want attached to these leaf switches? How many how much bandwidth do we need going out to these leaf switches? So do I want 1 gig ports or 10 gig ports, 25 gig ports? How much bandwidth do I need here? So I do want 40 gig connections or do I want 100 gig connections? And from a fault tolerance perspective, how many spine switches do I have? 
So here I've drawn two, which is absolutely fine. However, I always say that if you lost a switch, maybe we're doing a code upgrade or there's a, a power failure or a cable issue, I then have a single point of failure because if I lost one, I've only got one switch left on the network. So building this up and talking it through with the customer really teases out this information for them and helps them understand the, the constructs that we've got for, for building the network. So we'll have a look at a slide that actually is much cleaner than my picture. As I mentioned before, we've got lots of PowerPoint slides. So let's have a look at one of those and actually stand that and see how it would look if you were to present it. 